Hello again. Now today I'm going back to basics on sharpening. Quite simply, how do we sharpen a chisel? How do we sharpen a plane? Let's have a look right at the beginning, just how we do it. If I sharpened a chisel, well watching, you'll find it's very simple if you follow the basic steps that I'll show you. Now as you can see in the workshop, there are quite a lot of chisels. Um, I need to keep up to them. I've also got other chisels around. Um, turning chisels, chisels in the van, many sets in the other buildings so you need to be able to keep up to all these chisels so let's have a look now we're not talking buying very expensive chisels at the beginning you don't need very expensive chisels get used to using them make sure you actually need them first when you find a need for good tools then you can invest in good tools because they're going to pay you back don't go straight out buying robert solby or something like this when you don't need to just go down the market pick up something simple, basic, and a few little steps I'll show you will make this just as sharp as them expensive ones. Let's have a look. I mean, it came from the market, it's got there, £3.99. So, you know, we can't start saying this is an expensive chisel that I was making you believe was a cheapie. It wasn't. It's a cheapie that I'm making you believe is an expensive one by doing it properly. Comes with a nice blade guard, that's good. Now then, it's got there nice and sharpened. Now you can see that's off. Okay, and they're done in a factory, so even a robot can't get it perfect. Now the very first thing you need to concern yourself with on a chisel is the back. The back must always be absolutely beautifully flat and straight off to the end. No curving. You got any curving there? It's rubbish, you'll never sharpen it. So before we touch any gauges to try and sharpen the tip, we want to hold that back up. So what I do is I put it on the stones. On this, I'm using diamond stones, but you can use oil stones as well. I've got one here on the edge, and I'll just rub it over a few times just to see what I'm going to get on it. Now you lay it flat on the back. You see, so the sloping bit is on the top. Lay it flat on the back at a 45. Put a finger right on the tip well not exactly on the tip you'll cut your finger but on the raised part of the front and then again on the last bit that's on the stone so that it's flat and held flat you do not want any rocking then slide it backwards and forwards like so and then pivot to face 45 and do the same again the other way and let's have a look Okay, now, I don't know if the light is going to show you there. Let's see. There. Now you can see that. The edges have been caught. Up the two sides are getting caught by the stone. The middle is not. Which means that back is dished. That's no good. We need that flat. So you keep working this until that is flat. Now it's a reasonably coarse stone I've got here, so it should take the bolt off pretty quick, but then I want to polish it with a fine one. Now this can take a bit of time, so you need to be a little bit patient, but go slow to start with, so that you get the rhythm and you get used to how it feels to slide it and keep it absolutely flat. See, it's getting better. I still need them two dishes out of the way completely. Keep at it. And there you go, you see there is no dips or bumps in that now. But it's not quite as shiny as I want it yet. Now I can turn to the other stone, which is much finer. Now these are water stones, or they're diamond stones, but they're treated the same as water stones. A little bit of water and away it goes nice and smoothly. Just make sure all the time when you leave your chisel you oil it before and there'll never be a problem with it. There we go now at the tip that is nice and shiny now. There's no dips. You don't have to remove a finish you just want to make sure you've got no dips and holes and places that's not getting touched where that's getting touched everywhere. So 
Now you'll get a good tip on that. Now you don't have to do that every time, that's the thing. You do this once when you first get it, and as long as you don't damage the chisel, you'll never have to do that again. All you have to do is take the burr off of it as you're sharpening. Okay, now we can concentrate on the front. Now I use these, they're Eclipse, and I find them to be probably the best. There's a lot on the market, but these are simple, robust, um, and they, they give you like the useful information on the side there. But you've got all the data you need on there of what angle and what measurements it is um, for both chisels and for planes. Now, this bed here is for your plane irons and very big chisels. In there is for your chisels. Now, as I say, you get some wide square bed chisels. I'll go in the top there, but generally into there. It will tell you for chisels, you want 30 millimeters for a 30 degree cut. So I make a piece of wood. That's 30 mils, giving me 30 degrees. I don't write on it what it is. Then it also tell you, you need 40 millimeters for a 25 degree cut. So I make another one. That's 40 mil, exactly. 40 mil, not 41, exactly 40 mil. But saying that, if you get it 41, don't worry, just always use the same one. If you always use the same one, you won't have any problem. But if you change it, then you'll have a lot of grinding to do to bring it to it. Now then, how we set up? We always start off with the biggest one. That is giving you this big flat slope, the steep slope. That is what you're honing to initially. You set it in your honing guide so that it is facing downwards and make sure it's sitting in correctly, which it is then. Then put on your block and touch it onto. You see, just touching gives me exactly 40 mil. Lock it off. Now when you lock it off, make sure you do lock it off well and truly. I like to use a slotted screwdriver and put it in a bit like a T-bar. Slot it in there and you can really give it some power to tighten it. Because you don't want that moving at all. If it slips a little bit, you've lost. Right, now we're going to work on that biggest slope. Start off first on a medium grade, just to find out what this bevel is like, how they've done it. Is it the right angle? Do I have a lot of work to do? If it's right angle, I won't have much. If it isn't, I'll have to go to the call front and start. So we start on there, and just a few strokes, and I've got what we've got. And it's terrible. Now, when you're using a honing gauge, the wheel sits on the stone, like so, and rolls. You then got to press that tip down and let it slide on it. But you've got to make sure you don't get any of this. You get this, you're never going to get a clean edge. So you need to practice your technique of how to keep that from rocking. Sometimes it will go up a little bit and you'll want to put pressure on one side or the other to compensate for that. So what I like to do is I have my two thumbs under the back, they're the pushers, and two front ones there, they're the pullers. So I've got my push and pull there. Now I've got full control, it can't go anywhere. Thumbs and forefingers, there, bags of control. Then, to stop movement, I use these two. They go on there. One on each side means then you can press both sides evenly and you can feel where you're going. Go on to the middle one. And when you're going backwards and forwards like that, nice and smoothly, get to feel the pressure you're putting on with these two fingers. That's what matters. Press this side if it's sloping one way, press this side if it's sloping the other. Evenly if you've got no slope and you will get used to pressing evenly and you won't get a slope. Now, as you'll see there, that is the only bit that's touching, which means I've got to grind all that off because the angle is wrong. Go to the course one, keep it level, and away we go. Now what you're looking for is this line here. You want to make sure that stays perfectly 90 
with the side wall. That'll say you're running straight. If it starts to tilt, then your tip will be tilting and it won't sharpen properly. So keep that square. Don't worry about what the gauge, what, what this, this grinding bit looks like, because theirs is off, it's wrong. So, I'm squaring it up as well as sharpening. Now, you can see it's showing itself there now, how off it was. My line is square, there, but this upper line is sloping. That's how crooked that grinding is. Okay, I would say we are now there. And there it is, right off the edge. Okay, I just want to take the burr off of that. Now, to take the burr off, you just simply press and keep it flat. Slide it a couple of times at a slight angle. Just so slide it a couple of times and the burr will be gone. You'll feel if the burr's there. What I'm aiming at doing now is that has got the angle I want, but I want to polish it. The shinier that is, the cleaner cut you're going to get. Okay, onto the coarse one. Polish it up a bit. Better, coming down. Better. And the fine. And there, that's nice and shiny now. Okay, we can do a final one on this end one, which is an ultra fine. And there we have, nice, nice and shiny now. Now you don't need to have this many and obviously to get this many would be quite expensive in one go. All these are double sided. You just need one with a coarse and a fine flipped over and get used to them. Um, it's enough to do you, to keep you going. As you progress you can invest in more and more. Right, when you clean that burr off. There, done. Okay, right. Now that is all clean and ready for actual final sharpening. And what we're doing now is we're going to set the angle to 30 degrees, which is a smaller one, 30 millimeters. Again, on there, just slide it down till it touches. Make sure everything's square. Nip it up. Nip it up fully. Now we don't want to be going through all this lot. All we want to do is take a very little tip up of there just to give it that honed up fine edge just go on the fine one not the ultra fine on the fine one we do want to take some off and just give it a few strokes and there you'll see we now have a double tip but we have a double tip that is precise this time take the burr off a few times just a couple of strokes, a couple of strokes. Wipe off and have a feel. See if the burr's gone. I've still got it there slightly. You can use a strop to do this, but my leather's as good as a artificial one. 
And when you're in the field, the less tools you've got in your bag, the better. Okay, right, well that is now horned up and perfect. Now you put your tip back on that, put that in your tool bag, that will do you grand. As soon as it gets a little bit blunt, keep it away from anything metal, but as soon as it gets a little bit blunt, you just run it through the 30 degree angle again, the short one, the 30 degree. Run that through a couple of times and you'll be able to get about three or four sharpenings before you have to go back to the 25 mil. And that is it. Well, like I said, finally, because you're using um, water stones, you've got water on your bare steel. Even if you wiped it off, it's not enough. Oil it. I use a quick spray stuff. Any oil will do, as long as it gets the water off, it repels water. That's the end of it. And then that's ready for the van. So that is it. That is the real down to earth basics of how to sharpen a chisel from new. If you've got some old rusty ones, there's a lot more to do to it. But go out and buy a cheap chisel, three, four quid. Run it through its paces and then just see how good it can be. If you look after it, you keep that on and you don't go smacking it with steel hammers and stuff and you keep it away from metal, you'd be amazed just how much use you'll get out of that. Next time, we'll go on to plain irons. But for now, I think that's going to be a good start. Okay, right, well, if you've got any comments, put them in the bottom. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now.